Hello and welcome to the session in which we will audit accounts receivable. Accounts receivable exist as a result of sales on credit. It means when we credit sales or revenue, we debit, we create an account receivable. So account receivable is the result of sales on credit or revenue on credit. Well, revenue is considered a significant risk in most audit because auditing standard require auditors to assume to approach revenue as a specific fraud risk because revenue is one of the most important figures. So when sales are made on account, we have a double entry nature of accounting. Further reinforces this presumption. So anything that affects sales revenue, it's going to affect account receivable. And at the end of this recording, I will have a, a grid connecting sales revenue transaction related objective to account receivable. But the point I'm trying to establish here is it's an obvious point, but it's worth mentioning that account receivable is related to sales revenue. Also, account receivable is related to cash. Why? Because eventually the customer will pay the cash and we will remove account receivable. So this is the life of a receivable in an easy way. We sell on account, we receive cash. But once what sometimes happens is some customers don't pay. We have to deal with what? We have to deal with and collectible accounts. So also, client may mistake cut off due to error or fraud and determining the correct balance for the allowance. So this is what could happen with revenues or account receivable. What could happen is you, if you have two periods, period one and period two, you could shift account receivable back and forth or shift sales revenue and you have to deal with allowance. And those could be done an error, which is unintentionally or fraudulently, which is intentionally. Therefore, auditors may identify the risk of material misstatement related to realizable value, balances related objective for account receivable as a significant risk as well. So we also have to be aware of the risk of the allowance because the allowance is a result of account receivable. Sales create account receivable, account receivable generate allowances, which is an amount that we don't expect to collect. How much is that amount? That amount is estimatable. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So let's talk about substantive testing for account receivable. There are three tests when it comes to substantive testing of account receivable. Substantive testing of transaction, and we looked at this in the prior session when we looked at test of control and we said this is a dual purpose when we're testing the control we could also do substantive testing and we looked at this we could also do analytical procedures and this is an optional optional step remember analytical procedure is an optional step when it comes to substantive testing i will cover anyway although it's an optional step you should always it's it's a cheap a cost effective way not cheap cost effective way to kind of take a look at the numbers and the third method of substantive testing is test of detailed balances which we'll talk about more about this session and in other sessions as well so as an auditor you must gather appropriate evidence for various tests of detailed balances to satisfy the nine related audit objective there are nine related audit objective and i'm going to go through them one by one so this is what we need to satisfy when we're auditing account receivable. The first one, one of nine, is detailed tie-in. What does that mean? All what it means is we want, we want to make sure that the sub-ledgers, the subsidiary ledgers, agree with the general ledger and that the aging schedule are accurate. What does that mean? When you have an account receivable, you might have an account receivable general ledger account for a million dollar. Just this is your total receivable. Now, this account receivable is composed of sub receivable you're gonna have many sub accounts okay you might have 500 600 thousands of customers that make up when you add them all up they will add up to a million dollars so the first thing we want to make sure is all the sub ledgers are are add up properly and they and they represent the general ledger account also we want to make sure we have a proper aging schedule what is the proper aging schedule basically looking at the account receivable and determining how how late is the payment is it current 
Is it zero to 30 days late? Is it 30 to 60? Is it 60 to 90? Why? That's gonna help us with the allowance. So evidence may include reconciling subledgers to the general ledger, basically add them up, tracing individual customer account balance to the aging of to the aging schedule, and verifying the mathematical accuracy of the aging schedule. So that's one thing we have to do, making sure that the, that the all the subledgers are correct, are aged correct, and they are added up to the general ledger. So this is one of the objective detail tie-in. There are going to be nine objectives. The second one is existence, and this is one of the most important one. The objective is to confirm that the account receivable actually exists. The balance actually exists. It's not a, it's not a fictitious one. So evidence can be gathered through confirmation procedures, such as sending positive, negative confirmation to customers, reviewing subsequent cash receipt, and inspecting sales and shipping document. So this topic is very important verifying the existence and spe specifically confirmation we're going to have a whole session dealing with positive negative confirmation subsequent cash receipts but the point is is the account does the account receivable actually exist is it real why because if it's not real it's fictitious if it's fictitious it's a problem because if you have a fictitious account receivable you have a fictitious sales remember what we said about sales sales pause a significant fraud risk Completeness. The objective is to ensure that all account receivable transactions are recorded. Now, completeness is not as important as existence because as a, as a company, you want to make sure you have all the account receivable. It's not a major issue, but you companies may still perform analytical procedure and review cutoff procedure to ensure sometimes what could happen is the account receivable could be in period two, recorded it in period two, but it should be in period one. That could be a problem. Um, so that's what it's that's what's being done for now completeness is more important we're going to see later on for accounts payable the fourth audit related objective is accuracy and this is basically an accurate no punt intended for any account the objective is to confirm that the balance is accurate evidence may include reviewing customer contract agreement examining sales invoices for proper pricing and terms and recalculating sales taxes and discount you want to make sure the numbers that you are showing whatever that number is you know fifty thousand is correct is correct whatever that number is classification the objective is to ensure that account receivable balances are properly classified as either current or non-current now for account receivable most account receivable are current you want to be expected to be paid within one year so it's not a major issue but we might have some to do some to do with reviewing aging of receivable and assessing the company's credit and collection policy here but mostly ar is mostly current so you don't have to worry about this cut off the objective is to ensure that account receivable transactions are recorded in the proper period. Here you might review sales invoices, shipping document for proper dating, testing the company's cutoff procedures, and we'll look at that later on. You could also do analytical procedures, gives you an idea if there's something out of whack to identify unusual trend or fluctuation in account balance. Realizable value, this deals with the allowance. The objective is to determine the net realizable value. How much are we going to collect at the end of the day from the account receivable that's what matter okay here we are going to be taking ar minus the allowance because that's what really matters how do you determine this amount well you are going to review companies methods for estimating the allowance how did they come up with this figure you look at historical data what they did in prior year and what was their bad debt experience evaluating current economic conditions well if the current economic condition is deteriorating less and less people will pay and the opposite is true. Also, we would look at the credit worthiness of customers. And here, companies are using big data. Big data means they're analyzing their customer credit to determine the allowance, especially credit card companies. Simply put, realizable value looking at account receivable minus the allowance to come up with NRV. How do we come up with it? Each company is different, but this, these are some techniques. Eight is rights. The objective is to ensure that the, that the account receivable is our, we have the legal right to that. Usually that's not an issue. It's not like inventory. It's not a significant issue. It might include if reviewing customer contract and agreement, as well as examining any documentation related to pledging or factoring of arrangement. So the only issue we could have here is when we pledge a receivable. Pledge means we go to the bank and we, uh, we put up the receivable as a collateral. If that's the case, we may not have the right to it. So here, what we have to do, we have to examine notes payable, loans at the bank, see if there's any of these notes are related to any pledging. Factoring means if there's any agreement to sell those receivables. Presentation also is an essential aspect of financial reporting for any account, ensuring that account receivable and related disclosure, which, you know, sometimes you want to talk about 
we will talk about pledging and factoring in the notes that are presented in a clear which is plain language when you present you want to have people understand it understand it easy to follow and relevant it means it's helping the users to make a proper decision because presentation you could have the presentation but it could be so confusing that it's not helping the users also what we need to look at when we're auditing account receivable is how does internal control relate to test of balances because internal control is important first you look at the internal control now the good thing is about account receivable internal control over sales cash receipts and account receivable are typically strong quite effective for the majority of businesses and why because if you bill someone if you're in the business you want to make sure you are properly billing the customers when the customer pay you want to post their cash payment why two reasons one is customer satisfaction customer relationship if you, if the customer sends their payment and you don't post it they're not going to be happy about this two you want to make sure that you are billing the customers you're not going to do the work and not have a proper internal control to build the customers therefore the uh, internal control over account receivable generally speaking is quite effective in contrast in contrast to accounts payable and let me just kind of tell you this on a personal level think about if you owe someone money you really don't care I mean, in a sense that you let them worry about making sure you pay. But if someone owes you money, you're going to know the balance, you're going to know how much, you're going to keep up with it, so on and so forth. So that, that that's the reason why you have a strong internal control over account receivable by its nature. But internal control over receivable are concerned with three things. Making sure that control prevent or detect embezzlement. And here what the company would do, they will have segregation of duties, they will have authorization and approval process, physical safeguard of the assets, which is account receivable, the books and the cash, and regular reconciliation between sales and receivable. Now, also they wanna make sure there's a control over cutoff. What does cutoff mean? Means the AR is reported in the prior period. Here they want to make sure they are recording the sales in the prior period time the recording using sequential invoices this way they know when the period ends with the last invoice and they will perform what's called period end procedures all of those are internal control i'm just going over them to show you how they relate to test of detailed balances reconciling sales looking at ship and document customer order at the end of each accounting period matching all of those and last but not least we talked about is control related to allowance how do you how do you make sure your allowance is proper it, it's an estimate but how it's proper you review the aging of account receivable you look at credit evaluation of your customers you run their credit and you determine what's going on with their credit if their credit is deteriorating assuming you have their permission to do so based on the contract well guess what you're gonna have might have to increase your allowance and you're gonna you want to look at your collection effort if you have more people collecting you should have less allowance if you have less people if you're cutting down on that department you might have more allowance because you can't keep up last but not least is to connect the sales and cash transaction related objective that we looked at in the prior session to the account receivable balance audit remember that dual nature because remember when you debit account receivable you credit sales or revenue then you receive the cash you debit cash you credit receivable so what we're look we're going to look here is in this table look how sales transaction and cash transaction influence 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 account receivable okay so starting with occurrence if we can if we know if we know that a sales occur if we know for a fact that a sales occur if we can check yes we confirm this well what else can we confirm well if we can confirm sales we can confirm the existence of account receivable you notice how these two how these two exist uh, how these two relate so if you can confirm occurrence well to a great degree you're supplementing your uh, auditing for account receivable audit objective related balance existence if you can have assurance that you have recorded all of your account receivable well you have recorded all of your account uh, uh, if you can have assurance that all your sales are completed you would have assurance that your account receivable is completed as well if your sales is accurate well your account receivable is accurate accuracy related to both if you are posting and summarizing sales then you are then the detailed sub ledger to the ledger is also correct if you're properly classifying sales you're properly classifying they should be under classifying not under realizable value if you are recording sales in the proper period well most likely you are also recording you are also recording account receivable in the prior period called cutoff 
Presentation, well, if you are properly presenting, if you are properly presenting sales, you're most likely properly properly presenting account receivable. Again, because the dual nature, they go hand in hand. Now, when it comes to cash, if there is a violation of the occurrence, it's gonna be affecting the completeness. Why? Because if we, let's, let's go back to occurrence and existing for sales. When we debit, we said, when we debit account receivable, we credit sales. So if if the if we can verify that it occur if sales occur then we can verify the existence of of these sales. When it comes to cash, if we debited cash, we have to reduce account receivable. If occurrence is violated, if occurrence is violated, what's going to happen is this. Let's assume we book a fictitious transaction that says debit cash credit account receivable. What happened as a result? We reduced account receivable. We reduced account receivable. So the occurrence for cash, if it's incorrect, it's going to affect the completeness in account receivable. However, the completeness in cash, if we can verify the completeness in cash, it's going to confirm the existence of account receivable. So if we have all the cash, debit cash, credit account receivable, if we have all of them, now we, we're saying we have all of them correctly. If we have all of them, then it's going to confirm the account receivable existence because when you debit cash, you are going to reduce the receivable. But if we have a violation of the occurrence, it's going to affect the completeness. Now, the accuracy of cash will affect the accuracy of account receivable. Posting and summarization will tie in to tie in detailed. Classification will affect the classification. Timing will affect the cutoff. Again, timing and cutoff. Presentation of cash will affect the presentation of account receivable. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at MCQs, true, false, and additional resources that's going to help you understand this topic. Auditing is analytical. Analytical means you have to understand it. You have to apply it. The first step is understanding it. To really learn it, you have to work MCQs. You have to work true, false. You have to reflect on it. Invest in yourself. Passing the CPA exam is extremely important. That's going to help you change your career, change your career trajectory. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.